My name is Tom McGee. I'm from British Columbia, Canada, residing in Vancouver. I'm the 1982 World Super Heavyweight Powerlifting Champion, and at last year's World Strongest Men's Competition, I was the first runner-up. My goal this year is a modest one. I'd like to improve my position by one spot. I'm Simon Wills from Holland, and I'm Europe's strongest man. Hello, my name is John Gamble. I'm the strength coach at the University of Virginia. I'm the current heavyweight world powerlifting champion. I am Jon Paul Sigmarsson from Iceland, and I have been traveling further than any other competitor to get here, so I must make every mile count. I'm Chris Okonkwa from Nigeria, shot put and hammer thrower, Olympic lifter, heavy event, and Highland Games. I'm Alan Holberg from the Need, New Zealand. When I don't move heavy weights, I work for an insurance company. Can I interest you in a policy? Hello, my name's Jeff Capes. I'm from Holbeach in Lincolnshire, England. I finish fourth, third, and second in the world's strongest man. Maybe it's my turn this time. I'm Doyle Kennedy from the United States. I've been the super heavyweight world champion twice. I currently hold the world record in the deadlift at 890 pounds, and this is my first time in the World Strongman's Contest. In the land of the Kiwi, the of the they, Kiwi say no they say is no city is more typically, is more typically English, English than Christchurch. Well, the place is, well, the rooted, place in is the rooted in the dream of English 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 of the last century, creating this, creating this city of the plain. There are green, there are and green and pleasant glades dreaming in the sunshine. The statue of Captain, statue Scott, of Captain Scott is a reminder of the, proximity, reminder of the proximity of Antarctica. The architectural the mishmash is completed by echoes of beautiful downtown Burbank. An intriguing setting, an intriguing setting for this confrontation between eight strong men from four continents. Doing battle for the Homeling Trophy, for the homeling and, the trophy the and the title. World's Strongest, world strongest Man. Walking tours are a popular feature of this city of Christchurch, and that's exactly what the eight athletes here are going to do. Have a little walk. The only problem is that as they walk, they're going to carry a tree trunk in each hand. Each of these trunks weighs 175 pounds. There are two circuits here, and the time is 90 seconds. The longest distance achieved in that time will, of course, be the winner, or to the point where the log is dropped. The Fergus Walk is a new event to every competitor here, so what's going to happen? Well, your guess is as good as anyone's. Here in Cathedral Square in Christchurch, the local man, Alan Holberg, takes on the tough American powerlifter, Doyle Kennedy. Anyone who's ever run for a train lugging two heavy suitcases will have some small idea of the problem in this event. Oh, and that's a disaster for Kennedy, halfway around the first circuit, and his grip went. But the local man, Alan Holberg, is showing that this is a Canadian event that can be mastered by a Kiwi. And he completes one and three-quarter circuits. A good start for him. I asked strength coach John Gamble what were the difficulties of the Fergus walk. Well, in this event, I, I think that it's mostly grip, because if you, you know, like I think the leg strength and, and shoulder strength will hold. But as for the grip, most, some of the guys have big hands and, and small hands, and I think it's going to come down to who has the, you know, the strongest grip. Okay, now could I put you on the spot and ask who you rate in this event? Mm -hmm. um, I think Jeff Capes rates as the number one competitor in this event. Well, let's see if Jeff Capes fulfills that prediction made by his opponent here. John Gamble. And Gamble goes for the slow and steady approach. But Big Jeff is building up quite a head of steam. Let's see which technique works out the best. The one thing everybody was agreed on, don't change your grip. So. One circuit for John Gamble, and Jeff Capes goes charging on, and this is good going. Two complete circuits. Now he's trying to adjust, but it's gone. But the best so far. Easy. 
anything. But I couldn't hold on to it. Four arms cramped too much. My right arm was just hang on. My left arm, when I was trying to move it, it just slipped out. How did it feel? Was it really tough, that one? No. No, if I could just change my grip on my left hand, it would have gone. No problem. But because I'm not, I couldn't hold on to the grip, I couldn't go any further. I dropped my left one and I was still on to my right. No problem. Oh, that'll be beaten. No problem, you know. I think Wolves are, Wolves are, are run around with it. Well, let's see if Seaman Wolves does run round with it, as Chris Okonkwa does his float like a butterfly routine. And we've got two sprinters here. Chris's plan of campaign is obviously to gallop on until he can hang on no more. And there it goes, just short of two complete circuits. And Wolfson beats that mark and stops just short of the mark set by Jeff Kipps. How does Europe's strongest man feel he will do in this competition? I don't know. I try. I do, uh, do my best. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I try. Now it's Canada versus Iceland. Tom McGee versus the extrovert Viking, John Paul Sigmund. And he's so keen to get at it that he stumbled as he set off, and he's already building up quite a lead over McGee. He, the Canadian, is looking very unhappy tackling an event from his native land. Can Sigmerson hang on for a few more paces and beat Jeff Capes's mark? And he does. He beats Capes by about a couple of feet. That's the end of the road for McGee. And very different reactions from the two men. Was John Paul pleased with his performance? Very pleased. Now, what were you shouting there as you were going around? You were saying, Satan, Satan. What's yeah. that mean? I'm a little bit crazy. Little when bit... I, yes, yes, when I'm competing. You go crazy? Yeah, I have to do, do it crazy. Well, you, you, you do all the posing and you, you were really getting angry with yourself, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, I have to. It helps. First blood to Sigmerson and the maximum eight points. Jeff Capes happy to settle for seven and Simon Wolfse of Holland in third place there with six. Now we're in the situation here with the Europeans doing extremely well in this competition. Now, did I hear a right that you're working as a team? No comment. Um, we, we had a tactical talk, yes, and uh, we know our strengths, we know their strengths and I've got to admit, we've done, this, we've done a lot of sums. We've been talking for three days. And uh, we know a lot of weaknesses in, the, in their team. You're I mean, talking that, about the Americans, yeah? Yeah, the Americans are a team, always are, you know? But, uh, I mean, McGee is Canadian, but he, he is an American in a way. And uh, he came second last year. And, you know, it, it's going to be hit and miss all the way through. And um, let's, let's put it another way. If I've got no chance of winning, and, and Simon Wolfser or John Paul Sigmundson has, then we're going to work at a as a team for the last two events, so one of us wins. Come on, it would give you an unholy delight to beat the Yanks, wouldn't it? It would give me great delight to beat the Yanks. Um, but don't, don't let's lose the ideal of the competition. It's, it, OK, it's, the ideal is to win, and to, to win at all costs at some, at some stages, but uh, it's the enjoyment of the game. We mustn't lose the enjoyment. Uh, we're all enjoying it, we're all good mates, but when we're competing, we're the best of enemies. Steel bar bending is very much a traditional part of every major strength competition. These are bars of hot rolled steel and go all the way from this rather slender one of uh, 12 millimetres up to this whopping 19 millimetre thickness. The object of the exercise is devastatingly simple. The athlete takes a bar in each hand like this and either over the back of the neck over the top of the head, or would you believe, between the teeth, will bend it until the ends fit into this gauge, this eight-inch gauge in front of him. 
This is an event in which Jeff Capes of England in nine major competitions so far has never been beaten. We join it at the 14 mm stage with Nigeria's Chris of Conquo, Britain's Jeff Capes, Holland's Simon Wolfse and John Gamble from the United States of America. This is a fierce arm exercise with a strong potential for injury. And look out here for the cape speed. He really inflicts grievous bodily harm on this hot roll steel bar. But it looks as if the other competitors have copied his technique to great effect. Wolfse of Holland in particular gave it the treatment and all were successful. Under royal patronage, we move to the 15 millimeter thickness. And that one extra millimeter makes a tremendous difference. Going in this heat, John Paul Sigmerson, Alan Holberg, Tom McGee of Canada, and Doyle Kennedy. This is an event where main strength is just not enough. It needs that explosion of power to build up the friction, to heat up the bar at the pressure point and make it more pliable. If no one succeeds in bending the ends to fit into the gauge, the degree of bend will be measured. And it looks to me as if Tom McGee is going to come closest. as he runs out of time. So it's down to this group to produce a clear winner. Can Simon Wolfse maintain the speed and attack we saw at the 14 millimeter stage? And remember, Jeff Capes has never been beaten in bar bending events. But it's Simon Wolfse in the middle there who seems to have learned the lesson of the Capes technique and really attacks the bar and we could have the makings of a sensation here. Wolfse has made it and there's joy in the Dutch camp. Jeff is well aware of that success and uh, that makes a hard task harder yet. Chris Conquo looks like he's calling it a day. Jeff struggles on but he knows when enough is enough and so does John Campbell. Tom, by any kind of reckoning, having been runner-up last year, you must start this event as a favourite. What does that do to your confidence? Does that make you feel better or make it a bigger challenge? I don't think it makes that much difference to me um, in, a, in a really large sense because what I try and do is just take every event as it comes and uh, just concentrate on what I have to do because that's always been the winning formula is being able to focus on what you have to do. What about the steel bar bend? I mean, were you pleased with your reckoning there? I was pleased with it. Uh, I felt, uh, as soon as I'd finished it, I was a little bit upset with myself because I felt if I put a little more heart into it that I could have bent it. Now, what about Simon Wolf, sir? You must have looked down at him from your six foot four and a half and thought, this little guy is Europe's strongest man, but he's really proving his case here, isn't he? Yeah, he looks like he's a, a good competitor, and um, it's yet to be seen what he can do in the other events. Now, what about Jeff Capes now? This is his 10th major competition. He's always won this event. He reckons it's his event, and there he is, beaten into third place. Well, I think the bars were a little bit harder this year, a little bit tougher to bend, and um, he has been in the past the best on that. I don't know if he's getting older or we're getting better. <laughs> well, older or better, what did happen to Jeff? I got injured, as you remember, in the European, and uh, I'm not really better yet, but it's no excuse. Um, I know, I just hit it as I normally do, and it just didn't, just didn't do what I wanted it. Maximum points for Simon Wolfse, Tom McGee makes up a little for the disappointment of the first event with seven, and Capes has to be content with six in an event which he was expected to win. And after two events, Europe's strongest man, Simon Wolfse of Holland, is looking good, Jeff Capes is on his heels, and young John Paul Sigmerson keeps Tom McGee out of the top three. The deadlifting event usually becomes a war of attrition, and the door Victorian John Godley, the founder of Canterbury, would, I'm sure, approve of this marathon struggle. We're already an hour into the competition as you join us. In the hot sunshine, the tension is terrific for these competitors. 
The weight is in the form of the slabs of best New Zealand cheddar cheese. 405 kilograms, that's 893 pounds, which would fill an awful lot of mouse traps. Jeff Capes has stubbornly battled it out pound for pound with the power lifters. And this will be a personal best if he can clear it. Almost 300 pounds more than he's ever deadlifted before. What an achievement. Two hours on, and this is round 19. There are still five men left in this amazing competition. And America's Doyle Kennedy, world record holder, a specialist in this event, must be wondering what's happening here in Christchurch. He just cannot shake off the opposition. 495 kilograms, that's 1,092 pounds, and Kennedy applies his classic deadlifting technique. And success. John Paul Sigmundson now summoning up the mental powers. And he's quite prepared to fight it out with the likes of Kennedy, Gamble and McGee. And here he goes at that same 495 kilograms. And he makes it. Power is right. now of Simon Wolf of Holland, but just look at the state of his hands. Knowing him, though, it will take more than that to stop this powerhouse from giving it everything. Well, not comfortable with the board, and there's still time for a second lift. That looks like the limit for the brave Dutchman. John Gamble from the University of Virginia, USA. Yeah! 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 Still no thumbs up from both judges. Big John will need to take a list to starboard to get that left shoulder up. He does. Good lift. And John must be pretty pleased with it explaining to one and all how he got that left shoulder up. Just like that. So the stage is left to Kennedy, Sigmerson, and this fella, Tom McGee. He goes at his awesome weight of 495 kilograms. That's 1,092 pounds. Got him, Get on. Come on. A word of encouragement from referee Precious McKenzie. <laughs> Nothing to it. And his girlfriend Nancy looks pleased and relieved. More cheese is loaded, and we move now to 525 kilograms. That's over half a ton. Now it's John Paul Sigmundson. <coughs> Doyle Kennedy has passed at this weight. A brave tactical move, and here goes John Paul. Look out for fireworks if he lifts this. Four and a half times his own body weight. I think that means he's quite pleased. McGee now at that same weight, and he's beginning to do his verbal psyching and cage tiger routine. Gotta have it, get on! Okay. Woo! Yeah! Oh. Yeah! You got it, Tom. You got it. Really concentrating now on the job in hand. Look at the bend in that bar. Tom McGee gets a thumbs up and the battle goes on. 
No problem. And Nancy concurs. Well, more cheese now, and the total is now 535 kilograms, 1,180 pounds. A record weight for world's strongest man competition deadlifting. If Kennedy can clear this, he will claim his place in the history books. Well, Doyle Kennedy gave it all he knew, all his technique and strength and experience, but it was not to be. Can this extraordinary young man from Iceland succeed where Kennedy failed? Remember, 535 kilograms. Well, so very close, but he fails. He's really captured the affection of the crowd here. Only kidding, folks. Love and kisses from John Paul. So this is it, the final showdown in this marathon event. Can Tom McGee of Canada succeed in lifting a weight which has defied the likes of the legendary Bill Kazmaier, the heaviest total ever attempted under these rules in the world competition? 1,180 pounds. He's done it. We've witnessed history being made here. Success for Tom McGee in one of the hardest and most unforgiving events anyone here can remember. Tom, at certain stages of that competition, it looked as if you had reached your limit, and yet you always seem to find that little extra something. How do you do that? Well, I was experimenting with uh, my feet in different positions, different grip, and also... Uh, different drive with my shoulders and hips until I found the one that was working best for me. Now, I thought uh, for a while there today you were looking rather low-key, but you began to work on that psyching up bit, didn't you? Exactly. And uh, it, as I said to you earlier, uh, when I have to do it, then I'll start to do the vocal psych. And I felt like I needed it here because it was uh, pretty rough. It sure does get tougher, doesn't it? Well, things get tougher every year, don't they? For Tom McGee, victory, a record, and eight points. For John Paul Sigmerson and his Never Say Die spirit, seven. And for the still bemused Doyle Kennedy, six. After three events, two men share the top spot, Sigmerson and McGee. Simon Wolfse just behind, and Britain's Jeff Capes probably well content with his 15 points. The view from the top of Christchurch Cathedral looking down onto the track for a brutally tough event to bring day one to a close, the tractor pool. All the competitors are worried, not so much about the weight of these tractors, but the inertia from the huge rear wheels. Tom McGee and John Gamble are the competitors providing the manpower. And all the doubts are being confirmed, hardly a movement to be seen. The tractors have proved intractable. So it's a break for the competitors and back to the drawing board for the organizers. Hey presto, the tractors have gone and in their place this giant American truck. Paradoxically, it's heavier than the tractor at 10 tons, but with much less inertia to overcome. And the first man to go against the clock, Jeff Capes, looks quietly confident. Now this is another of the sort of events that Jeff Capes has made very much his own. He's fast, powerful, determined, and he's got precisely the right technique, keeping the center of gravity low in this almost all fours canter. This is a killer of an event, not at all the way the competitors would choose to finish a hard day. Ten tons of truck pulled along 35 meters of track in just over 40 seconds, 42.6. Forty-two six, 30 meters. Thirty-five meters. That's slow. Is it? Thirty-five meters. Thirty-seven, I want it. Well, Jeff may have wanted thirty-seven, but forty-two point six is a real target. Seaman Wolfser here will certainly go for it. Wolf 
Musa is a very impressive, fiercely competitive contender. And he has his sights trained on Jeff Capes every moment. But it's obvious this long, hard day has taken its toll. He's not going to beat that 42.6. He's putting in a final spurt, but he's not going to make it. 50, 53.8 seconds. Now it's the turn of Chris Okonkwo, a Highland Games specialist from Nigeria. Big Chris is a policeman back home. I bet he finds it easier to get the traffic moving back home in Lagos than overcoming the inertia of this 10-ton truck. Not exactly what you'd call a stylist in this event, a bit too upright and jerky, but this is a creditable performance from Chris. It's going to be slower than Wolf, sir. It's going to be over a minute, 66.7 seconds. Well done, Chris, but he looks as if he's wading through treacle. Now John Paul Sigmerson, joint leader of this competition, will find out just how much his long hours of effort in that marathon deadlift have cost him. Ready? This fellow just doesn't know the meaning of surrender. He's giving this everything, but is it enough? He's using good technique, but perhaps the inexperience in pacing himself over the whole competition is showing here for the 23-year-old. Jeff Capes conserved his energies in the deadlift. John Paul gave it full throttle, and now he just can't find that extra gear. It's going to be a slow time, slower than a conquo, over 70 seconds, 73.3, and that will not please him. But he's still got enough energy left to form a wrestler's bridge. No submission yet from John Paul. And here comes another man who surely cannot have much left at the end of this very hard day. For well over three hours, Tom McGee battled it out in that deadlift, pushing the frontiers of lifting and demanding awesome power. And straight away, it's obvious that Tom is suffering. Usually one of the fastest athletes among the heavies, he's battling to keep going. He's only got something like, what, five yards to go, and he might just beat Sigmerson's time. Over a minute, 69.9 seconds, and Tom looks spent. So, victory and eight points for Jeff Capes. Wolf said the ever-present in second place with seven. Six valuable points for Chris Okonkwo, but disaster for Sigmerson with only one. And on the overall scoreboard, Europe's strongest man, Simon Wolfser, earns himself a £1,000 prize from the sponsors for leading at the halfway stage. Tom McGee still hanging in there in second place. Tom, the question that's got to be asked, did you pay too heavy a price today by that marathon deadlift? Well, I hope not. Uh, the tractor pull, my legs were burning like I don't think I've experienced before. So it did take something out of me, but I think I'll have enough left. I'm in good position, and I expect it tomorrow to be my stronger day. Because I think you're second overall tonight. Yes. And that's that's, that's got to be good, hasn't it? It's good, but it, it hurts when you're down by a point and it costs you a couple thousand dollars. Indeed, it does. Yes. Yeah. So, again, I as I mentioned, I don't like to look back, but I did uh, throw a throw a few points away in the Fergus walk. And you can't really afford to do that in these contests. Seaman Wolf, sir, many congratulations. You're a thousand pounds richer tonight. How does that, you're, you're happy about that? And he's surprised too. But I don't believe it. You don't believe it? <laughs> but you're very, very strong, aren't you? You're, you're in good condition. Yes. I hope so. Tomorrow uh, is another day. We see tomorrow. Time to bind up the wounds to pride and aching limbs, but not yet to rest. As the shades of night fall on Christchurch, in a land where hospitality is a byword, a special Maori welcome to the world's strongest man. Te wa ru 
Maoris called New Zealand Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud. And the coastal area surrounding Christchurch looks like all the best parts of the Scottish Highlands brought together in a breathtaking vista under the southern sun. The hills blaze with wildflowers and their glow mellows the city streets. The lake at Groins Park, a popular beauty spot near Christchurch, is the backdrop to the events of the second day, and all the competitors are feeling the pain. Jeff, how are you feeling this morning? Well, I hope they're feeling as bad as what I am. <laughs> That's the question you were asked. I'm pretty sore. Um, well, the word is you didn't sleep all that well last night, is that right? No, well... You know, I mean, let's face it, I mean, we, we expended a lot of energy yesterday and I started getting food cramps all over my body and uh, that doesn't allow you to sleep very well. When you're lying there sleepless, do you run the events of the day before over and over in your mind thinking where you went right, where you went wrong? Sure, I know where I made a few mistakes and, uh, you know, like the bar bend, I didn't make a mistake, I just didn't, you know, do what I was accustomed to do. And... Um, ifs and buts. If I put the logs down two foot further, I would have won the log race. Uh, I was fortunate to win the, the truck race in a respectable time. And um, the deadlift, I lifted nearly 300 pounds beyond my best ever. I mean, I had a great day yesterday, really, you know, all in all. And um, I'm just hoping that I can maintain that reasonable form today. Simon Wolfser, who's really been in the wars, is looking anxious about the day ahead. The first event of day two is overhead rock lifting, using these huge and very cumbersome river boulders. The athletes will be starting at 84 kilograms, that's about 185 pounds, and going on up. The sky's the limit. After the deadlift yesterday, all I can say is I hope they've got enough big rocks left around here. The problem presented by this event is not the weight of the rocks alone, it's their awkward shape, the sheer impossibility of getting a clean purchase. Chris Oconquo, with his 103.5 kilogram boulder, shows just how much of a problem this is. 228 pounds of sheer frustration to hoist a loft. Good lift, good enough to get him joined sixth place. How does a methodical fellow like Tom McGee train for lifting these different shaped rocks? I think that's more difficult for someone like myself because I like to be systematic and, and figure out how to train for something and, and this event kind of throws that away. So uh, you just have to be basically naturally strong and, and uh, I don't know, an animal or something. <laughs> so there's not much uh, technical virtuoso here, I don't think. Three people now eliminated, five left. How do you read the situation now? No idea at all. John Gamble reckons he's worked out a method, and he's got a chance to put it to the test now with the 121 kilogram boulder. That's over 268 pounds. He's gonna go from knee to shoulder to head to lockout. Well, that's the idea. Let's see how it works out. Well, not for nothing is John a strength coach at a university. In an event like this, method is everything. But uh, giant strength comes in handy too. I control it now. Okay. Okay. Press now. Press. Press. Good point. Good point. Control it now. Control it. Right there. Good job. And a good lift for John Gamble of the USA. Jeff Capes to lift. And Nanook of the South decides to see what's going on here. Lift. Jeff Capes now attempts that same weight as John Gamble, 268 pounds. And it looks as if Jeff is employing an entirely different technique here, rolling it upwards. Oh, that looked dangerous. And Jeff fails. Same weight, and this time it's Seaman Wolfson trying to block out the pain in his red raw hands. And you don't need a knowledge of Dutch to understand the encouragement he's getting. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's obviously inspired him. Success there for Simon Wilson. irrepressible John Paul Sigmarsson of Iceland going for that same weight, 268 pounds. Last night, John Paul was looking all in, but now, with the resilience of youth, he's storming back on day two. Good job, Paul. Good job, Paul. Come on. Look at it. Well, we are looking at it, and it's going aloft. I'm from Iceland, he says, and plenty of rocks to chuck about up there. No tree trunks, but plenty of rocks. Now, Tom McGee, not really happy with this sort of event. He likes to work out a method and practice it. But he looks as if he's going to use much the same sort of technique that failed for Jeff Capes. Now he's got to lock out these arms. And he's unable to lock out, so Tom goes out, and he's beginning to look dejected. Well, as you can see, it takes four ordinary mortals to carry in one of these boulders. There are three men left in the competition now, Wolfser, Sigmarsson and Gamble, with the boulder now weighing 126 kilograms. If you want to gain some idea of this sort of event and what it's all about, if you've ever struggled to lift a bag of cement, John Gamble is here trying to lift the rocky equivalent of two and a half of them over his head. Come on, John! A great lift. Success for John Gamble of the United States. Simon Wolfser retires, leaving the challenge to John Paul Sigmarsson, who's stripped for action. And the usual invocation to the Viking gods of heavy boulders. Anyone got an aspirin? But not to be. <laughs> Histrionic despair from John Paul, and that means victory for the quiet man from Virginia. John Gamble collecting his maximum eight points. Simon Wolfse and John Paul Sigmarsson collect six and a half points each for that equal second spot. And with five events down and three to go, Simon Wolfse of Holland is still top of the board with 31 and a half points. Tom McGee, the man who was runner-up last year, is there again at this stage with 28 and a half. And Jeff Capes, just one point behind him. Well, there's no chance of a Scottish Highlander like myself feeling homesick in a country which looks so much like home. And this next event certainly compounds that. It's one of the classics of the Highland Games circuit, the 56-pound weight over the bar. The big difference here is that in New Zealand, there's the lake behind us, which means that every throw will end with a big, big splash. The bar is at 14 feet as we join the competition. And only four competitors are left. Capes and McGee, who have cleared his height, and Sigmarsson, and this man, Simon Wolfse, to go. He's good at these explosive events, and it's a good throw, despite that aching arm. Now, Sigmarsson. In theory, this event should favour the taller men with the long arms and the maximum pendulum effect. but it also needs good control and explosive power. Ah! And it's a good throw. <laughs> and one in the eye for us. While well, Jeff Capes looking brooding and determined, as Sigmarsson and Wolfse had to settle for sharing joint third place. The battle is now on between him and Tom McGee. With a bar at 15 feet, Big Tom is custom-built for this job. Oh, yeah! yeah for 
Six feet four and a half inches tall, methodical and competitive, and he's going for it. Yes, they do it in Canada, and it shows. Now, Jeff Capes usually does this wearing a kilt in places like Cowell and Brimar. The man from Lincolnshire is now a Highland Games specialist, very familiar with the demands of this event. And just look at this. So the shootout between Britain's Jeff Capes and Canada's Tom McGee goes on. The bar is now being raised to 15 and a half feet, and you can read what you will into the looks that they're exchanging, as Tom McGee steps up now to make his bid. The man from British Columbia has lost that dejected look as he fights it out to the finish. Well, not quite. He got the height, but the trajectory was wrong. In this sudden death situation, it's up to Jeff Capes now to clear this height to collect the maximum points. And the tension is really building now. He makes it look so casual, and it's clear. And he's pleased with that. Capes holds off the challenge of McGee to collect his eight points. McGee collects a valuable seven. Wolfser and Sigmerson share the third spot and five and a half points each. On the overall scoreboard with 37 points, Simon Wolfser of Holland at the top. But only five points cover the first four places. So this is really boiling up with Capes, McGee and Sigmerson all going to be in at death with Wolfser. New Zealand has a population of 3 million people and 90 million sheep. So you might expect that wool would play some part in this competition. And here it is, a bale of two and a half hundred weights of it, which the competitors will lift to a height of 12 feet with this rope through a system of pulleys. A controversial event this, none of the competitors like the look of this apparatus at all. And it's a very difficult technique to master, but Jeff Capes here is really going to give it a go. And he's bellowing like the bull of Bashan. I think he prefers nylon to wool, don't you? Oh, crap! Use his legs! Legs! Six feet nine and a half, he raised the bale, a great effort there. And here's a man looking rather unhappy. Seaman Wolfson doesn't fancy this event at all. His hands badly blistered, his right arm heavily strapped. He's suffering for his eyes. Well, even if the encouragement is now in double Dutch, the pain is just too much. And that's it, two feet nine, and this could be a disaster for the Dutchman's hopes of maintaining that top spot. Well, this fellow should know a bit about wool. He's Alan Holberg of New Zealand. He's a big chap, but he's using this tug-of-war anchorman technique, and that's a point of no return. It's exactly the same height each time because he's not pulling the rope hand over hand. And he decides that's quite enough of that. Three feet, nine and a half, and he beats Wolfser and gets a good hand from the local crowd. Now, Sigmarsson, a fellow who will relish this event. They have a somewhat similar event in the Viking game. And as you can see, he's using a hand-over-hand -hand technique, and this is what's needed. He even looks as if he's enjoying it. How about that indeed? Great effort. And it's the best so far, nine feet, ten and a half inches. The 
next competitor is Tom McGee in third place overall, and it looks as if he's offering up a few words of prayer. After his poor showing in the Fergus Walk, he told me he was worried by the grip events. And there's a hint of desperation creeping into his efforts. Nancy says we need this one, and indeed he does need it, to stay in contention. But he's not getting it. Two feet one is the mark, and that should signify the end of his hopes for Tom McGee. Maximum points for John Paul Sigmundson. Seven for Geoffrey Capes. A creditable third place for local man Alan Hallberg with six. Wolfson and McGee, with four and two points respectively, must be in despair. With one event to go, the truck loading, a dramatic change on the overall scoreboard. Jeff Capes of Great Britain takes the lead. Simon Wolfse slips to second place, and John Paul Sigmundson is still in contention. With me now, two of the men who are within one event of the proud title of the world's strongest man, John Paul Sigmundson of Iceland and Geoffrey Capes of England. Geoffrey, how do you feel at this moment when it's all so very close on this last event? Uh, one of the nice things about it first is that the Europeans are one, two, three at the moment, not just that we're in a position of winning. Now, what about this young fellow here, John Paul Sigmundson? He really is something, isn't he? Well, the Australian commentator asked me what I thought of him, and I said, he's an animal. And he asked him what he thought of me. He said, he's an animal too. <laughs> so, uh, but it's the same old thing, you know. Um, when two animals get together, there's hell to play, you know, especially if we're, if we're both lions and male lions at that. <laughs> well, two male lions, in fact, uh, the leopard skin seems very appropriate. How do you feel right now? I'm tired, of course, but uh, I will do my best. And this is the kind of event in which your strength and speed could do you very well, couldn't it? Yeah. I'm not sure about uh, what I can do in this event. I was fourth in... Uh, Holland, strongest man of Europe, but I will try. You'll give it a go. Yeah, I will be angry. Jeff, the very first words you said in this programme were, in the world, you've been fourth, you've been third, you've been second, and now maybe it's your turn to be first. Do you think it is? Well, I'm certainly going to try. I've got a lot of things to prove. Um, I want to do it for my own country, obviously, um, but most of all, I want to do it for myself. <coughs> and a suitably epic grand finale to this tough competition, lorry loading. Ten sacks to be loaded, each weighing as much as the average man, 12 stones. And John Paul Sigmundson can afford to smile as he gets ready to go against the doer American powerlifter, Doyle Kennedy. This is by common consent, the hardest event in a hard competition. They call lorry loading the man killer. And John Paul is sprinting. <laughs> Well, as you can see, the refinement of cruelty that was added to this event in the European heat in Holland is here again. Flour in the bags, very fine flour that gets into the competitors' breathing and can stop them dead in their tracks. And it's done just that to Doyle Kennedy. But not this man, John Paul Sigmundson. It's going to be a very fast time. One minute, 31.7 seconds. <laughs> Do you get the feeling he's moderately pleased with that performance? But I'm not so sure about Doyle Kennedy. John Paul, first of all, congratulations on that amazing little bit of a run around with the sacks there. Thanks. Secondly, have you ever been to England? Yes, I have. Yes? You like to yeah. visit England? Yeah. Well, well I'll not. tell you something now. In a bank in England, waiting for you, is 1,000 English pounds. You have been voted personality of the competition. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. New Zealand's New Zealand colleague, Phil Gifford, Gifford, breaking, breaking the news from sponsors from banking sponsors to John Paul. Now, the two North Americans, Canada's Tom McGee and John Gamble from the United States. Get set. 
Last year, at the World's Strongest Man competition at Magic Mountain in California, Tom McGee set the fastest time ever recorded for truckloading. And just look at him go now. Gamble is taking things nice and steady. But just look what's happened to Tom McGee. This man-killing event has taken its toll of both of these powerful men, but suddenly McGee seems to be in a slow-motion nightmare. Come on, Tom. Come on. Come on. He's paying the price of his epic efforts of yesterday. John Gamble is on the home stretch. His time, one minute, forty-seven point two seconds, and he's feeling the pain. Now, this is all about the lonely courage and character and the battle for self-respect of Tom McGee. Gamble to gamble at the point of collapse. McGee knows that he's lost his valiant bid to become the world's strongest man. Nobody would blame him Nobody for surrendering to his agonized exhaustion. But he's nothing if not a fighter. He's nothing if not a fighter. And that look from Nancy says more than words ever could. Everybody here is willing him to complete his last lap. And would you believe it, he's putting in a sprint finish. And this New Zealand crowd recognises true grit when they see it. Now the last round up. Jeff Capes looking ferocious and Simon Wolfson, the best of friends out of the arena, but no quarter will be asked or given Finish. here. Get set. Go up. Come on, Jeff. Come on, the boat in. Look at this. They're matching each other stride for stride. And this could be crucial. Sigmerson has set up such a fast time that if Wolfson were to beat Jeff into third place, that could be enough to allow the Icelander to snatch the title at the last breath. But look at this, Wolfse has run into that pain barrier we talked about in this event. And he slowed down dramatically, but Jeff is keeping up the pace. And how about this for confidence? He snatches a gulp of a soft drink. And Wolfse is really hurting. All Jeff has to do now is to deliver his last sack and he's won the competition. And he's done it. The final scoreboard tells the dramatic story. Simon Wolfse of Holland is in third place. John Paul Sigmarsson of Iceland is runner-up. But here in Christchurch, New Zealand, Britain's Jeff Capes proudly wins the title The World's Strongest Man. Jeff, you've travelled a long, hard road to get to this proud moment. The world's strongest man. How do you feel? Oh, I'm going to get drunk tonight, boy. I mean, when I first started on the road, the strongest man in the World Championships, I've in his second, third and fourth. And you said before in the early commentary that uh, you're going to make it one, two, three, four, and I have done. But on reflection... When you think back nearly 10 years, it was in Christchurch where I set up my first international record, Commonwealth Games record, Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games gold medal. And uh, I come again in 1980, broke my record again. And now I come third time, so it's third time lucky. So what, a, you know. An emotional moment for you. Yep. I'm, I'm all right, really. A bit pleased, you know. Um. Last thoughts, Jeff. Now that you're beginning to get your breath back, just uh, how do you sum up how you feel at this minute? Phenomenal, fantastic. 
I'm going to buy all the mates, all the other competitors a beer tonight. And uh, I deserve one too. I might even buy you one. Many congratulations. Thank you. Fine. Now the awards ceremony as the world's strongest man is hailed by his fellow competitors. And to make the award, the Earl of Ilchester, a director of Homelink, steps forward to present Jeff with a trophy. At the age of 34, Jeff capes at last, enjoys the view from the top of the world. Yeah!